At the beginning of 2010, Professor Chris Dobson gave an entertaining and fascinating lecture at the Chemistry Centre in the Royal Society of Chemistry's headquarters in central London, discussing his research group's work on the origins of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. We visited Professor Dobson's group at the Departments of Genetics and Chemistry in the University of Cambridge to find out more about the pioneering research being done there, the potential for future treatments and the threats to further development owing to cuts in government funding. As we get older, we think that our proteins have a greater tendency to clump together to form these toxic forms and our natural defence mechanisms get less effective. Um, and the result is that at some point, um, particular proteins um, start this process of, of accumulating as toxic um, uh, elements and if they're in the pancreas they can cause diabetes, if they're in the brain they can cause Alzheimer's disease. Uh, but we think it's a common mechanism associated with this lack of, of um, protection as we get older. The Dobson Group works in the largest fly laboratory in Europe, using fruit flies to research the effects of the toxic forms of proteins on the brain. So what we have here are flies that we've essentially given Alzheimer's disease by taking the protein that causes Alzheimer's disease in humans and putting it into the brains of these flies. And then what we do is we can see that actually these flies don't move very well at all compared to our normal healthy flies. So what we're trying to do is to make changes to this protein or to make changes to the environment which controls how this protein works to try and turn our Alzheimer's flies back into normal healthy flies and by understanding the process that goes on in the brains of our flies we hope in the end understanding what goes on in Alzheimer's disease itself. Um, of course it takes 10 to 15 years often to get a compound in, from the laboratory into uh, the clinic but I think that this is going to happen and I think we can be very optimistic that um, there will be ma great progress in this area in the future. But I think if we look forward, in the next 10 years or so, we could well have a complete new family of drugs which actually addresses the underlying causes of the disease um, based on rational uh, understanding of the processes that are involved. The UK's science and innovation in this area are buzzing compared with the rest of the world, but turning that science into a treatment and taking that innovation to market needs full support from the government. We are in a position to translate our basic research into um, commercial activities and I think that this is a huge opportunity for this country with its science base to look at the next generation of high-tech industries that we can build addressing these problems and my view is it's perhaps the next contribution that this country could make to the world. But it won't happen without proper funding. And we must invest in this. And many other countries have recognized this and are putting large amounts of money into the types of research uh, that we actually are in a leading position, that, that in this country we are actually leading, but we will lose that lead if that funding doesn't come through to us. The number of people with Alzheimer's disease in the UK will double in the next 40 years. Professor Dobson calls this a ticking time bomb. And so it's really this generation, if you like, of young and middle-aged people who ought to be concerned about the funding and the research in this area so that we can uh, prevent this time bomb from exploding.